Hello everyone, my name is Brian. I'm a newly qualified doctor in London. I study medicine at the University of Cambridge and at Imperial College. What I want to do is give you my seven top tips to doing well in your medical school interview. Now, as I've been an interviewer and an interviewee, these are my seven top tips. I've also spoken to other interviewers at the University of Cambridge and Imperial College London, and we've agreed that these seven things are the most important things to do well in your medical school interview. Tip number one, read around your subject. That doesn't mean read every page of a massive medical school textbook. What that does mean is try to stay up to date with what's happening in the medical world today. Now, with everything that's going on, it's very hard to look beyond COVID-19. But what I would suggest is to try and avoid talking about COVID-19 at an interview unless specifically questioned. It's unlikely that you are the person who knows more about COVID-19 than anyone else. And therefore, it's best not to go too far into the subject. What you want to do is show that an interest in, in a specific area of medicine. Personally, my area of interest is in cardiology. For the three months before my medical school interviews, I look on BBC News in the health section, looking at cardiology related subjects. And then when I found something that interested me, I would then go onto Google and try and find out more about the subject. This really helped me. At my college at the University of Cambridge, we have three medical school interviews. One of them ended up being all about cardiology. Now this wasn't down to luck. I wrote in my personal statement that I was interested in cardiology. And because of that, the interviewer started asking me the questions about the subject. And then we ended up just talking about it for the whole interview. So try and find an area that you're interested in and read around that subject. Tip number two, know your personal statement inside out. Your personal statement is your time to shine. You'll be expected to know and be able to answer any questions about anything that you include in your personal statement. Now, what that means is try to be as truthful as you can. Do not exaggerate any awards or any accolades, because if you get found out, that can look really badly on you. Tip number three, ask questions. The major thing that interviewers are looking out for is someone who's really interested about a subject. A great way to show an interest is to ask a question at the end of the interview. Most interviewers will ask you at the end, do you have any questions? Now, a lot of people panic about this question and feel like they've got to come up with something really original. Try to avoid asking any specific questions about your interviewer's area of expertise. It can look a little bit try hard and also a little bit stalkerish. What you want is for the question to seem off the cuff and something that you're genuinely interested in. If you asked a maths or science question that you weren't sure about, use that time at the end to ask a question. You can ask the interviewer, what was the right answer to the question? Or you could ask the interviewer, if they were answering the question, how they would have gone about it. And when they try to answer your question, look interested. And my tip about asking questions goes beyond just the interviews. Developing the habit of asking questions around a subject is a great mentality for learning. A lot about being a good doctor is asking the right questions. And what you want to do is develop that skill early. Tip number four, do not worry. Now, I know that's easier said than done. In the future, I will be doing a video about how to guide the interview. But a lot of what happens in your interview will be out of your control. I'll also do a video about the polling system and how to apply to the right college for you. Tip number five, do not believe the stories. Yes, some professors can be a little bit strange, but it's very, very unlikely that you'll come up against anyone or anything too weird. It can be useful to hear about other people's stories, but it's best not to read too far into them. Everyone's interview is different. And if you're thinking too much about what other people have said in the past about their interviews, it can cause you to be derailed from your interview. My tip for number six is something to remember on the day, eat a good breakfast. If you apply to Oxbridge, it's very likely that you'll have multiple interviews throughout the day. When I had my Cambridge interviews, I had one interview at nine o'clock in the morning and my very last interview was at 4.40 p.m. I was the last interviewee of the day. Make sure you have a hearty breakfast and have snacks prepared for the whole day. A breakfast high in protein and in fiber will make you feel fuller for longer. And this is important because it'll help you stay awake when your interview does come. Now, tip number seven is the simplest, but most important of all. This is something that my dad mentioned to me 
moments before I entered my first interview. He's interviewed thousands and thousands of university students. Tip number seven is smile. What you want is to look like you're enjoying the whole process. The interviewer is looking for their future students. They don't want to be working with someone who's always sad. What they do want is to work with someone who enjoys learning. So those are my seven top tips. I'll be preparing more videos about Oxbridge and comparing Oxbridge to London. So make sure you subscribe so that you can hear about those when they get released.